2022 NFL Draft coverage on Keon Sports is brought to you by JBL Roofing and Construction. Sports fans and homeowners alike, let me take this moment to tell you about JBL Roofing and Construction. JBL is a licensed, bonded, and an insured contractor with experience to complete any job needed for your home or property. Let our team of professionals help you with vinyl siding, windows, roofing, and gutters. Get the job done right the first time and stress-free with JBL. Call them today at 330-677-9463. That's 330-677-9463. Or visit them on the web at jblrc.com. Jeffrey protects insurance. In today's day and age, insurance from someone you can trust is more important than ever, and you won't make a better choice than Jeffrey protects insurance. At JPI, they specialize in Medicare, healthcare services, and life insurance. Visit them at jeffreyprotects.com or call them at 330-304-7267. That's 330-304-7267. Dave's Golden Shear Barbershop, a staple of the community since 1954. Dave's Golden Shear Barbershop has been your trusted barber for nearly a century of great haircuts. With affordable prices and excellent customer service, there is no better place to get your cut. It is located at 26915 Center Ridge Road in Westlake. And TNT Construction, your top choice for residential, commercial remodeling, construction, and building services, not only in Cleveland, but all of Northeast Ohio. Look them up today at TNTCleveland.com. The top three running backs in the 2022 NFL Draft. Uh, my prospect rankings here about to unveil these top three. But here's the funny thing about this running back class. I like this running back class. There's a lot of talent in it. Quite a few guys who probably can make an impact early on in their careers. But the funny thing about the league right now is that the running backs are in not as much of high demand. We've seen this trend over the last five, ten years of you know, running backs in the first round, it's not really as much of a thing. They start going in the second, uh, third round. That's when they really start to come off of the board. Now, there's always a few that go earlier on, and that's still a possibility in this draft class. But the other thing that's interesting about it, there are a lot of talented running backs in the NFL right now. Not just from a playing perspective. People can think of fantasy football as well. There are a lot of running backs who have high usage, make a lot of plays. And the other thing is for the teams that um, have really good quarterbacks right now, which feels like most of the AFC at this point, again, they're so focused on passing the ball that the running back position is not as important for them. So the prospects I'm going to go over, touch on here right now, they might not go first round. Uh, It could very well be second or third round. I'll touch on when I believe that they will come off of the board. But the thing is, these guys are going to make an impact, all three of them. I can promise you that. Starting off at number three, Isaiah Spiller, Texas A&M. So Spiller is an interesting back to me because he has some resemblances to some uh, well-known running backs before in the league who had some success themselves. Uh, He has a lot of ability. Again, really most anybody would think he's probably a top three guy in this class. Now there are quite a few that I would say are nipping right at his heels. He almost got left out of my top three here, but he sneaks into the top three uh, because he is a long back with excellent vision. He displays plenty of patience letting those holes open up, and I think the patience is the most important thing for him. He lets the play develop, and then he can hit that hole and show that initial burst of speed. Um, It's not a ton of burst, because of that bigger size, but it's adequate as he lets the hole open up, he hits that, and then as he starts picking up speed in open field, he's a lot tougher to catch because he can start hitting that second gear. He's a pretty decent pass catcher out of the backfield, which separates himself from some other guys who are bigger backs who are similar to him in this class. The main concern for Spiller, he has had a tendency to put the football on the ground, some fumble issues, he'll need to touch on that here in the league. Uh, If he can really shore up that ball security, Spiller's probably headed in the right direction. 
to make an impact early on in the league. Player comparisons. Adrian Peterson, Le'Veon Bell. Those are the two that come to mind when I watch Spiller. Not because he's as explosive as Peterson, and not because he lets a play develop quite like Bell. Uh, there are those similarities, but it's not to their extent. But it is a mix of both of them in his play, which you can't go wrong with that. A lot of it has to be with him being a taller, longer back, and the both of those guys were. Peterson just had that acceleration in the open field that Spiller can nearly get to, and that patience. Bell's one of the best at doing that. Uh, he was always so patient of letting that hole open up when he played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Spiller, again, if he can emulate those two guys, he's going to be good to go. My projection for Spiller, second to third round, somewhere in that range is when he'll come off the board. I don't think that will make him the first running back off of the board, but it could be the second running back off the board even. Best fits for Spiller. Again, not really any team out there that their number one priority is a running back right now. But there are teams that still need running backs. Arizona is probably the best option for him right now. Uh, they have James Conner still. James Conner scored a lot of touchdowns last season for them. But we know he's had his injury history at times. And they don't have Chase Edmond anymore. So they really need another running back. You could see Spiller and James Conner split the carrying duties there with the Arizona Cardinals. Next up is Buffalo. The Buffalo Bills, they have not really been able to get the ball moving on the ground last year, year prior. Uh, some of that has to do with the offensive line. Some of that just has to do with the running backs. Devin Singletary, um, Zach Moss. They did just bring in Duke Johnson, but again, he's more of a third down back. So an opportunity to maybe go with some power here, bring in another running back. They'll have a lot of depth in that room with four guys, but Spiller would be the workhorse of the group. Houston, Houston right now running with Rex Burkhead. Uh, Mark Ingram not there anymore, went back to the uh, the New Orleans Saints, that's where he's at now. Uh, so really Houston would also be another good fit as they really need a running back. My wild card team is the Carolina Panthers. They have uh, Chubba Hubbard as their backup. Of course, uh, Hubbard is behind McCaffrey, but McCaffrey always having his injury issues. I know it for everybody out there who takes McCaffrey with the first overall pick in their fantasy drafts. I know why. He makes a ton of catches. He runs the ball a bunch. He is an impact player for the Carolina Panthers, but he's just not built with that durability. Uh, so you almost have to anticipate McCaffrey being out anymore. And you have to think about, well, if Hubbard and Spiller, you have those two, you're at least set. Number two on the list, James Cook of Georgia. Cook, so much fun to watch on film. Part of a great backfield and such a, a great running back history with the Georgia Bulldogs, especially in recent history as well. A ton of great running backs have come through there. And a lot of them at the same time where there's three or four guys that could easily split the carries. For Cook, it was a little bit of that as well. He was with a group of several good running backs, uh, so it limits his touches. But what I do know is he has a lot of ability. His brother, Dalvin Cook, again, that name, Dalvin Cook, he's a threat in the league. If James can live up to that ability, again, that would be ideal. He's just an electric player. He has plenty of speed in the open field. He has incredible bursts. That lightning quickness with his agility, it's such a deadly combination. Makes it hard for a defense to catch up to him. Um, he does not pick up a ton of yards after contact, uh, but the speed does help him to avoid those crowded areas and avoid the initial contact up front. He will need to get stronger in the league, be able to break tackles in order to really have some success. Um, now, he is a good pass protector as well. I do think that he picks up those blitzes quite well, which makes him very useful on third downs. He is primarily a third down back because of his pass catching ability because of his pass protecting ability, picking up the blitzers, because of that speed that he has. When he comes into the league, will he start off as a third down back only? Not sure about that. Um, perhaps, but depends upon the situation. I could see him immediately becoming more of an impact player, uh, but if he becomes an every down back, again with his size in a smaller frame, will he have the durability to withhold? Uh, again, that will be 
uh, to be determined, of course. But Cook, a really fun player to watch. My comparison here for him is his older brother, Dalvin Cook. Dalvin is a little bit more physical. Again, still still a smaller frame, but he built onto that frame as he got into the league. Uh, he has had his fair share of injuries as well. But I do think that uh, that he might... James here might be able to emulate some of what his brother did. And a lot of GMs, a lot of teams out there, will hope they can pick up a Dalvin Cook type player. My projection for James Cook here, second to third round, again, might be the third, fourth back off the board would be my guess. But again, he's, he's firmly my number two of this group. A lot of upside here with him. Teams that would have the best fits for him, the Cincinnati Bengals. Of course, he would initially be a third down back. Samaj P. Ryan is the backup right now to Joe Mixon. I'm not overall super impressed with P. Ryan. He's okay, but I think James Cook would be a huge upgrade to be the third down back. So Joe Mixon, again, doesn't have to be as much of an every down back. He wasn't last year. More of your first, second down guy. Short yardage. Get him a rest. Again, he's really your star. Add James Cook to the third down. And Joe Burrow has another weapon. The Tennessee Titans, that would be a great addition there. Derrick Henry's your, your power back. But then to add a third down back uh, with your power back, your workhorse in Derrick Henry, would be pretty nice for the Tennessee Titans. The New York Giants have Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley, an unreal talent, but he's had some major injury issues. How much can he stay on the field? Not sure there. You couple James Cook with Saquon Barkley. If Barkley stays healthy, it's an excellent one-two punch. If Barkley doesn't stay healthy, then you have James Cook to cover. The last one, the Kansas City Chiefs. They've been adding some running backs in the offseason. I'm not still impressed with that running back room right now. Add James Cook. Give Pat Mahomes another weapon. Again, you really can't go wrong if you're the Chiefs, especially as your division is really getting stronger and you need to make sure that you keep adding weapons or else you could be surpassed by the Chargers, the Raiders, and the Broncos, they're still putting things together, but again, they're going to try to be nipping at your heels as well. So you got to make sure that you can stay up there uh, and really putting yourself in a, in a position to stay in the playoffs and keep going to the playoffs. Number one, Kenneth Walker III of Michigan State. Walker was so much fun to watch this past season in college football. He's a total monster really the headliner of this class in my opinion. Now he's, he's not necessarily the top prospect for everybody out there in this running back class, but by far and away he's my number one. Um, I do believe that James Cook maybe could end up having more potential and have an even better career, but Walker's ability right now will allow him to absolutely take over from the start, 100% without a doubt. If he gets to an organization that has an offensive line that can open up holes for him. Again, he is a relentless weapon. Uh, he's compact with his build. He has a strong upper body. Uh, again, when he makes contact, he has that physicality to stay on his feet. Uh, he really puts that on full display each and every single game. But at the same time as having the physicality and uh, being built you know, just so sturdy, um, he's got a great change of pace. He has a nasty jump cut to change direction and really has that shiftiness for a guy who is pretty sturdy himself. Every time he touches that football, I would expect Walker to possibly be ripping off a big play. He is a touchdown threat each and every single time. Uh, you can just ask Michigan. You can ask a lot of the Big Ten. Again, some multi-touchdown games, but that Michigan one was definitely of note this past season. He doesn't fumble the ball. He keeps it really secure. That's always a, a positive for your running back. Uh, and he can just keep improving on his pass catching and blocking. Again, those are the two weaknesses for him. Uh, again, primarily a first and second down back, but he can be an every down back if needed. He just needs to continue to improve on the catching and the blocking. My best comparison for Kenneth Walker III is a guy that Northeast Ohio is very familiar with in Nick Chubb. Both have that compact build. Nick Chubb can make those quick cuts to change direction, but again, with that build, can pick up some speed and space, has that physicality. They're really built very similarly to each other. I think most people are going to see that Walker will translate in the NFL much like Nick Chubb did. I expect him to be 
uh, really that, that feature back. Uh, again, he could be that for a team immediately, uh, but again, with not too many teams having desperate running back needs, I could also see him being a, a backup r right away, uh, but then just waiting in the wings in case of an injury. But he's going to make an impact as soon as he touches that football. He'll probably be a late first-round pick to a second-round pick. I doubt he'll go in the first round because I don't think a single running back will go in the first. It will likely be the second round. But Walker is the ability for somebody in the later first round to be able to want him and be able to snag him. Teams that he would fit best with, the San Francisco 49ers. They're still working on establishing who's that running back. It feels like it's a different running back starting each and every single week. You add Kenneth Walker there, he's guaranteed to be your starter without a doubt. Houston, mentioned them earlier. He, they would be a great fit for Walker in the sense of they still need a star running back. Rex Burkhead's not the guy there. Again, Kenneth Walker would get a ton of touches with the Houston Texans. The Buffalo Bills, he'd instantly become the starter with the Bills. Then they'd have four uh, on that depth chart at running back. Again, that would be beneficial for the Buffalo Bills. Establish a ground game and it would keep Josh Allen from needing to be the leading rusher on the team once again. And then the last one, the wild card team. I don't think he'll necessarily go here, but it would be smart to think about it, would be the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys with Ezekiel Elliott. Elliott gets paid a lot of money, and Elliott was a really good running back. But he's had the ups and downs with maintaining his weight, maintaining, uh, taking care of himself. He's had his ups and downs with playing. One season where he'll be really good. One season where it's like, is he, is he getting washed? I'm not sure. Uh, this past season wasn't great for him. Will he maybe bounce back? Possibly. But I really think that it would be beneficial to, even if you're keeping a hold of Ezekiel Elliott, they're playing him. You bring in Kenneth Walker. You have him waiting in the wings. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him playing here very shortly. But that's the top three of the running backs in this class. Make sure to pay attention as more prospect rankings will be coming out each and every single day here with Keon Sports.